Hello, my soccer universe. Well, that was not quite like it. Uh, I should probably say up front. I think the Champions League is my absolutely top favorite competition of all competitions in soccer. However, what happened this week phew, was not only from uh, the outset you, you kind of expected not much, but then the games really didn't deliver absolutely anything of note. Yeah, one great goal. One great goal. But uh, what I really have to, have to say that the teams that had, to, at least that had a little bit of a chance, barely showed anything. Absolutely anything. And yes, it is also down to the other opponent uh, doing their job and asserting themselves. But what was happening there, it's... I almost want to go as far as saying it's disgraceful uh, and it's not befitting the competition. Uh, to give an idea of how bad, bad it was, yesterday in the uh, around lunchtime, I was about to say morning now, it was around lunchtime, uh, I actually pre-did the graphics already for the probabilities that I will show you later. Uh, knowing very well that unless there is some landslide victory, the ratings will not change enough, that the probabilities will not change enough. Yes, I uh, rejected with updated ratings. It didn't change any anything. And I might as well do the same thing for the Euro Europa League. I mean, there are basically only four scenarios that you have to consider because uh, all the six other, other games, there will most likely nothing happen. Yeah, uh, it's not exactly what I would like to do. At least in the Europa League, we have two games where there might be a modicum of excitement there. So let's see where it goes. I will very briefly talk about the games. We started out with Manchester City at, uh, in Budapest playing Gladbach, uh, a game that I expected. Yeah, City will get two goals very quickly and then they will shut it down. That's exactly what happened. I, I should have put my money in it. At least the De Bruyne goal, that was a beauty. I think this was uh, probably the nice, one of the nicest goals in the Champions League this season. Uh, from the way it was played out and the shots just... Mm -hmm. And then Phil Foden and Gundogan play around with the Gladbach defense. It's 2-0 and it could have been more. Uh, they just didn't have to exert themselves. I found it very noticeable that uh, Guardiola went with six midfielders to take care of midfield and attack, which is the most Guardiola-like thing to do. So, that game done and does it. Even if Gladbach would have made the first goal, which there was a little chance, there would not have been much happening. Uh, after Gladbach made it 2-0, I decided, okay, let's focus just on Real Madrid At Atalanta. I don't need to do anything. Uh, I, I don't need to watch the CCC game. Maybe that there is a little bit uh, there. And to be fair, Atalanta maybe for 15 minutes uh, put some pressure on Real Madrid, but Real Madrid just knew how to count, counteract the pressing style of At Atalanta. You have the technically gifted players that with long passes and good con um, ball control can take care of that. And I also have, have, have to say that uh, when Gasparini said um, before the game that uh, Real Madrid cannot really surprise him uh, and he's prepared, no, he was not. You did not prepare for what happened. And of course, you could not prepare that if your goalkeeper sport yellow makes such a uh, mistake um, to play it out that uh, the ball to Mold, Modric then to Bonsema uh, to make it one of one. No, you cannot prepare for that. But I have, have, have to say, I actually, actually felt that the energy of Atalanta was missing uh, for most of the first half. As soon as Real Madrid got a little bit of control, it happened around minute 20 or so. Uh, just when I started star, star watching, just when that was about to happen, Atalanta had not really a chance. Uh, yes, they got uh, uh, Real Madrid then gets a penalty uh, when uh, Zapata comes. You know, uh, they made some changes. Iligi Zapata can come on, and then there's a penalty that Ramos converts. Uh, and yes, I thought also that the foul was initially outside of the box, but if you look closer, yeah, it's inside end. Okay. 2-0 Ramos and at that point I actually said to myself, let's go to bed and that's more or less what uh, happened, although I, I could watch, <laughs> I followed it a little, a little bit more, but I was totally surprised when I saw that the game ended 3-1. Um, and what I saw then is that Atalanta, yes, you are outsider 
And against Real Madrid, you were clearly, uh, you could see that there is a clear difference in class between the Real Madrid players and the Atalanta players. And I'm saying this with lots of respect and love for Atalanta. However, um, if you get a few chances to add that, I mean, I really think this was not the frantic Atalanta that we used to know, but I also know that uh, teams of Atalanta style, when, when, when they come up against an opponent that is just uh, where the players, every single player in class is so much better than what you have, uh, it will be tough. I mean, I see this with Lusk uh, as well at times. That uh, There is a level where you just, with the pressing style, you cannot go beyond that. And that's what happened. I mean, you have Kroos, you have uh, Modric, you have Bob, 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 I mean, um, those are players... Even if they are old, they are still very, very, very good. Let's put it that way. But then Atalanta had a few chances, especially lay, lay, lay down Zapata and so on. Um, you gotta make those chances. I really like the free kick that they took um, by Luis Muriel. Uh, where they made a wall that was charging at the wall of Real Madrid. I think that was good. Then the free kick was taken very well. But Right then, he makes uh, changes. Yeah, let's go for it, let's go for it. We only need two more goals, two more, we get it. And Real Madrid scores the third one there after through Asensio. Um, as I said, if Atalanta would do what they usually do in Serie A, uh, convert their chances, which also some, sometimes it, all, it doesn't happen, but you know, um, the Atalanta I know, would do that, then I think there would have been a chance because uh, the Real Madrid defense is not the most solid one. But you know, if you don't even take 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 a chance, then you outclass the it was fully deserved. The way this goes on uh, went on. Um, I can't even say less about the yesterday. I mean, Bayern it was similar to the Man Man City City game, and Bayern didn't even play the uh, very very best squad. I mean, Nubel played uh, and, and so on, which also tells it tells you Lazio was not present offensively. Uh, yes, they got a kind of a soft penalty, but it was a pull. Uh, Lewandowski converts that, 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 that one, and um, they had more chances. Could pull on. Chupo Moting come, come, comes in with the second uh, touch. He makes it 2 0. Yes, Lazio got one back. That's probably the most positive thing I can say about that, that one. But uh, yeah. I watched only Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, and the same thing. I mean, uh, even worse than what Atalanta was doing. Uh, there was. Chelsea had so much control over Atletico Madrid. Atletico had no fight in them. They didn't even have a real chances. Uh, that complaining about two penalty situations and the red card seems almost uh, nonsensical because Chelsea was so much better than Real Madrid, uh, uh, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, swap out the Madrid teams. Great Roland. Um, it was not. <laughs> it was disappointing. It was really the the least thing that I would expect from Atletico Madrid is, is to is to fight and bite and whatever. Uh, they didn't do anything like that, absolutely not. And yes, this is a new Atletico Madrid, and yes, same with uh, as with At At Atalanta, Atletico Madrid. The only uh, danger came from um, Joao Felic who when he took a shot yeah it was always situations where either you place it better or you need to put yourself in better positions the goalkeeper needs to save this so yeah and then uh similar to the real madrid game uh the first goal from chelsea came from a free kick from atletico that goes deep not very well thought or thought of and then caught on a count counter attack where you still have a four man advantage but everyone is converging on to uh, Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech is unmarked, absolutely unmarked. The next two men are just chasing him uh, and then he takes his right foot, uh, which probably caught Oblak off guard, but Oblak needs to save this. If you're one of the best goalkeepers in the world, and he is, Oblak is in the top three, probably even the top two goalkeepers out there, but you got to save that one. I'm sorry. Uh, the second goal came later from, from, from car contact, but it was really not a great showing. And yeah, so we have now the following eight teams. Uh, these are now in the order, the, uh, no particular, particular order, except for uh, the order that was given when the draw for the round, 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 round 16 was made, the Manchester City game was the first round, then Bayern and so on. So this is how I have them. We have City, Bayern, Chelsea, Liverpool, Porto, PSG, Dortmund and Real Madrid. Uh, most no, notably no Italian team in there, which 
is frankly embarrassing. Atalanta, we knew has an outside chance. Lazio has no chance. Juventus, I'm looking squarely at you. You cocked that one up. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, but I'm actually not unexcited. Yes, a little bit too many English teams in there, a little bit too many German teams in there for my taste. Uh, we have Real Madrid in there with, as, a, as a big name. We have a French team in there. Yes, it's the biggest French team. Uh, and then we have Porto in there. So, we have at least one, uh, one outsider is in there and I have to say everyone is an outsider against uh, uh, um, except for Man City and Bayern. But I thought the draw will be happening on Friday but let's I thought since we don't have too much to talk about the games let's I give you my dream draw for the qual quarterfinal. And let me preface this with um, those two up here City and Bayern are the big favorites and maybe let's look at the uh, chances before we go in, in, into my dream draw. Those are the pre-created ones. Man City, huge fav favorites, 21% of winning it ahead of Bayern. Chelsea is actually hanging in there, but to be honest, uh, Ch Chelsea is solid. I'm not sure if they have it to go past Bayern, but you know, I, I'd be willing to be surprised on that one. Then Liverpool, Real Madrid, Dortmund and PSG, but uh, from the way I see it, it's Manchester City, it's Bayern Munich, and then they are, they, 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 that's the rest that have to spring a chance. Um, and uh, by, by the way, everything below Porto, I sort, I gave it the same rank uh, based on the stage they were eliminated, but then I sorted them by the points that they have made in the comp competition. So that's why Juventus is ahead of Barcelona, Sevilla, Lyle, Leipzig, blah, blah, blah. Okay, dream draw. I first want, since I don't want uh, these two to be in the final, I don't want that. I actually don't want any, the, 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 these two to win it, really. So I said, it would be great. It would actually be a great show and it would be great to have it. Let's have them play in the quarterfinals. And then one fave favorite is out, makes the comp competition a lot, lot more open. So, and I didn't put the um, club logos there on purpose because uh, it's my dream draw. It's uh, not a factual draw yet. Then I, th then, then I went straight for store storylines. What's the next big storyline that I want to have? I want Tuchel to play against PSG. I think it would be a great ma match of Tuchel going for a revenge on uh, his former M M employees. Uh, there's also the little thing that, you know, Pochettino, Chelsea, there are some storylines in there that might be interesting. Uh, also Thiago Silva against PSG. I think there's enough in there. I want to see Chelsea play PSG. Also two teams that I find very similar in the way they are made. And, you know, I think that, that, that would be a good one. Um, and then that leaves the other one. I would like to see Liverpool against Dortmund. Uh, we had this in qualifying the Europa League a few years ago. Klopp going against Dortmund would be really, really, really interesting, which leaves one tie that's a little bit of a throwaway. Porto against Real Madrid, but those are two of the best teams from the Iberian Peninsula, so I mean there's a little bit Iberian derby as well. But we don't stop it there. They also make a semi-final draw, and I'm thinking, yeah, given those quarterfinals, what would, would I like to see? Of course, I would like to see that City and Bayern play against the winner of uh, Porto Real Madrid because whatever happens, this gives us a big name semi-final. And more importantly, I want the winner of Chelsea PSG play the winner of Liverpool Dortmund uh, just because of storyline. However you pick it, there is a storyline there. Chelsea against Dortmund. Tuchel goes back to Dortmund. Interesting. Chelsea against Liverpool. Yeah, that is a classic in Champions League semi-finals. PSG against Liverpool. I think this sounds really, really interesting. It's also Klopp against Pochettino, Champions League final 2019. So I think that's also something a PSG against Dortmund. Yeah, we had a rematch from last season. Also very, very interesting and intriguing. So yeah, draw will happen tomorrow. Uh, I will make a, vi vi a video on the draw as well. So yeah, uh, let, let me know what you thought, thought about the games. I thought it was rather uh, boring and I think the I'm not for the current Champions League reform that they are discussing. However, I do think that the group stage and the round of 16, there needs to be some excitement added because usually the Champions League kicks into the next, next game come quarterfinals most of the time. Uh, I, especially the group stage seems to be most of the time a foregone conclusion. Although this year I think it was a little bit better. But uh, the round of 16 also lacked lately a little bit of the excitement that you would you usually expect from the Champions League. And it has also to do with the bigger getting bigger. So, um, yeah, quarterfinals. 
I really hope that we'll get some nice games there. Uh, I would say that two will be exciting and two will be boring. Unless the draw goes so perfect uh, that there's a clear favorite in every matchup. Let's see. Any case, I want to hear your opinion on all this. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!